When you see a nuclear disaster take place, when you see the mushroom cloud, it's time to run. There's an adage that needs to be followed with every disaster. Go in, stay in, and tune in. Go in, you're going to want to find shelter and you're going to need to find lead, concrete, or soil. One of those three things is going to provide you the best amount of protection from radiation. Because remember, radiation and what it does to your cells and what it does to your body, they are minute, invisible bullets that go through until they stop in an organ or they go through and emit their damage inside of your organs so that you can't repair yourself and it sends all sorts of disastrous events, cascading events to take place in your body. So go in, find shelter, soil, lead, or concrete. A car is not a very good insulator from radiation, neither are uh, wood houses or even uh, polyester, things like uh, you know Rubbermaid shelters, things like that a bathtub, anywhere that you would need to go for a tornado. You're going to want to follow that same procedure for a nuclear event. So that's go in, stay in. You're going to want to stay in because as the, let's say a uh, multi-kiloton weapon goes up into the air, it's racing up into the clouds at over 100 miles per hour and it is raining down radiation through fallout. That's going to take place over the course of the next couple of hours. So stay inside, find a safe place, and stay inside. Step three is tune in. And what that really means is just find out more information before you venture outside. You don't know if something similar is happening nearby. You have to find out information. That is your key to success. You already know what happens. Well, you're tuned in and the authorities say to start taking your potassium iodide. This is different than potassium iodine. Potassium iodide, uh, these are iosat tablets. These are going to fill up your thyroid with the salts of iodine. And they're going to make it so that your thyroid is so packed that it can't take the radiation. You're going to have to take these frequently. Uh, there are some negative effects to them. I'm going to go over a couple with you. So first, what is it? KI or potassium iodide is a salt of stable non-radioactive iodine. Like I said, it fills up your thyroid. Uh, how does it protect? Uh, the thyroid gland can't tell the difference between radiation and stable iodide. So it's going to absorb both and it's going to absorb whatever you put into yourself first. It blocks radioactive iodine from entering your thyroid. Uh, it doesn't give a 100% uh, solution, but it does give you a solution. It does give you chance. Um, who can take it? Uh, almost everybody can take it, but you'll go, you're going to want to look at your exact scenario. If you're pregnant, there's specific things you need to uh, think about. Infants, elderly, specific things they need to think about. How is it given? Uh, the FDA uh, proves two different methods. One is in a tablet and the other one is a liquid. I'm a big fan of the tablet ones, but if somebody's already suffering from a uh, illness that doesn't allow them to swallow a tablet, a liquid form would be nice. How often should it be taken? Taking a stronger dose of KI or taking KI more often than recommended doesn't give you anything else. It doesn't help you. You can only fill up your thyroid so much. A single dose protects the thyroid gland for 24 hours. Uh, One-time dose at recommended levels is usually all that is needed. There are some side effects uh, with iodide, and you want to think about those now before you have to take them. Is anybody in your family allergic to iodine? Uh, you know, what different things do you need to consider for a disaster? But that's something that we can all purchase, and it's relatively inexpensive. And if you live in an area where uh, emergency management teams are, a lot of times they'll give out them during times of duress. And you can even inquire about that in times of peace. But let's say for a moment, the reaction already took place. You saw the mushroom cloud. Things have settled. You stayed inside. And now you have to go outside because you have to get water. Three days without water and you're not going to survive. You have to go get it. If you're in a place that doesn't have running water, what do you do? You're going to expose yourself uh, to radiation. So what happens after that fact? Or for people who have gotten caught outside, what happens for them? For them, apple juice. Why apple juice? That seems like a relatively uh, uh, non-consequential item to have for a nuclear disaster. During the Chernobyl incident, in which there was uh, cesium-137, was uh, some children were inundated with it. 17 years after the Chernobyl incident, uh, the nuclear power accident that happened at Chernobyl, most of the radio contaminated among the populace were children. Uh, the varying levels of 137C, so cesium-137, absorbed among children in this area 
was explained by their food source. So they were continuing to eat things that had radiation in them, especially milk. Milk is a big, uh, you know, the animals pick up the radiation or they have it inside them. It transfers to the milk glands and they're given to children, human children. So what did they do? They gave them apple juice, just apple juice. The pectin inside of apple juice binds to cesium-137, pulls it into your intestines and lets you pass it through your urine. Apple juice can save your life. Why should you have it? Because you need it. You have to have a solution. What happens when you run out of potassium iodide pills? What happens if you're already exposed or your family is? You have to find a way to pull that out of your system. There are some other methods. You can buy 100% natural pectin. You can introduce that into your diet and you can even use that today to start leaching heavy metals out of your body and into your urine and passing it through. These are in a lot of uh, autism cleanse or Asperger's cleanses and people will try to get additional heavy metals when they feel that heavy metals had a play in that affliction and they'll try to pull them out and they'll do so with pectin accurately and to positive net effects. Reading from another research article, and I'm going to leave the articles down in the description box below. These are each from the National Institute of Health. This isn't just somebody on the internet saying, hey, introduce pectin into your diet. This is the National Institute of Health. I suggest that everybody go and read that themselves. Tens of thousands of Chernobyl children annually lead to receive treatment from healthcare in other countries. Doctors from many countries gratuitously work on the children in the area, helping to minimize the consequences of this terrible accident but the scale and spectrum of the consequences. And this is just one particular area. Imagine if multiple bombs went off. The scale and consequences, or the scale and spectrum of the consequences are so high that no country in the world can hope alone to cope with the long-term consequences of such a, a disaster or a catastrophe. The countries that have had uh, suffered the most, including Ukraine and Belarus, extended gratitude for the help from other countries, of course. Uh, it goes on to say, for practical reasons, the curative, like apple pectin food additives, might be especially helpful or for effective decorporation of CZ-137. From 1996 to 2007, a total of more than 160,000 Belarusians uh, received pectin, apple juice, or apples, as a food additive on 18 to 25 day treatment cycles, five grams twice a day. As a result, Levels of cesium-137 in children's organs decreased after each course of this additive. And this is compared with, they did placebo effects, and I wouldn't want to be one of the ones taking the placebo. Unfortunately, they didn't know, but for science, they had to find out whether it was something else or it was just the pectin. As a complement of standard radioactive measures, apple pectin preparations are given, especially in the UK, Ukraine, this is from a different article, to reduce cesium-137 uptake in the organs of children. The question has been raised, is oral pectin also useful when children receive radiologically clean food? So basically, is it the pectin or is it other clean food, good food that doesn't have additional radiation in it? The average reduction of cesium-137 levels in children receiving oral pectin was 62.6%. A 62% reduction in cesium-137, not to mention other radiological uh, contaminants that were in their body. The reduction with clean food, so they drank milk that didn't have radiation, they ate food, nice vegetables that didn't have radiation, but no pectin was 13.9%. 62% if you drink apple juice, 13% if you're eating a good diet and that natural, the natural pectins and small amounts inside of that diet are bringing it through your body. Uh, statistically significant. The reduction of 137 cz, uh, cesium-137, is medically relevant as no child in the placebo group, so they took a sugar pill or a salt pill, reached values below uh, 20 uh, BW, which is considered as an associated uh, tissue damage for radiation, with an average value much higher than that. The highest value was of reduction was in the apple pectin group. Guys, I implore you, please, we, we're looking at a range of dangers in our world right now. We're looking at Russia threatening nuclear war. We're looking at other rogue countries holding on to nuclear bombs. India and Pakistan could go nuclear at any moment. China could go nuclear. Do they want to? No. Will they in sight of a failing society or a failing power? Yes. That is what the governments of the world fear, to lose their power. 
And if they fear that they're losing it, just like a mother or father who might be losing their child, there's no telling what they'll do. That's the exact thing that we prepare for in the survival community, that when people are hungry, they don't have any fear of consequence because they are at their end in their life, in their mentality, they cannot handle or cope anymore. And so they react and take actions uncaring, unthoughtful of the consequences. That's the danger of nuclear weapons, that one government will be uncaring and unthoughtful of the consequences, and they will push the button and start nuclear war. But all isn't lost. A lot of people get stuck in fatalism with nuclear disasters, and they say, whatever, you know, I'm just going to fry and die, that's it, and they don't even think about it. Get apple juice. Get your iodide. Shelter. Go inside, stay inside, and find information. There are things that each one of us can do. There is no room for fatalism. People who are fatalistic or say uh, just their particular deity will protect them, their God will protect them. No, your God has given you information and you have to protect yourself. In every religious group around our world, every uh, partaker in that religion is told to do the things necessary to sustain continuity of life. That is not biased to one religion or the other. Each one of them, you are given the power to do this. So I implore you, please consider making apple juice, just apple juice. Uh, clear apple juice from some of the studies that I saw was better than uh, cloudy apple juice. Please consider making it part of your disaster kit and just make it a continual rotation. I know in my family, we drink apple juice all the time. And so it's just a continual rotation that we keep a storage of. We keep a certain amount in store. Should a disaster strike and we can't make it to the uh, supermarket, we can't make it to the fruit stand, you have that amount in storage and you treat it as such. A special thank you to each one of our Patreon members for making these videos possible. I can't thank you enough for bringing the news on the night shift, a Monday through Friday nightly broadcast where we can cover important topics. Topics that brought this video to mind with Russia, India, Pakistan, the United States, all threatening war with each other, knowing that at one point they could become desperate enough to push that button. Please prepare. Take a couple of moments. Get some food stores. Find, make a plan. Get a map. Mark down water locations. Get some apple juice and some KI. As always, from Kelly and I to you and yours, please stay safe and keep watch.